Ballsy Thinking, the gender agnostic antidote to sloppy thinking. What is the biggest problem in the world? That is to say, if it was solved, we would find that humanity is in a better place on the planet. To me, it's how can we find a clean alternative to the internal combustion engine? Now, today, this is probably the most important ballsy thinking video I've ever done because I'm going to introduce you to both the technology and the man uh, who I believe has a solution to that problem. His name is Malcolm Bendel and I've worked with Malcolm uh, during the course of over a decade. Uh, I've been paid to work with him on some instances, helping to edit his copy and organize his records and so on. And uh, he has been someone who has made great strides in terms of bringing together all the different parts of science, biology, physics, uh, and so on, and geometry and maths, and turned out uh, a theory and then practical production of clean engines. You may have found this video because you saw uh, Malcolm on, or a teaser to Malcolm's work on Joe Rogan. And of course that's still there. But the main thing that you need to do if you want to get into the nuts and bolts of what Malcolm has achieved as a great inventor uh, and an inspirational thinker is to go to the Strike Foundation where he's deposited all of his research as open source. So it's strikefoundation.earth. The question is, how can you understand the vast amount of research and theories that he's posited on that site? Um, the bottom of the front page you'll find something called the plasmoid unification model. And I must say I was delighted that he chose the final edit of the copy at the bottom of that as a description uh, was the one that I did for him and it's still up there today. And all I would say is you cannot possibly understand everything in that model um, unless you are an incredibly smart person and I'm not that so I don't understand everything. What I do understand though is the evidence of my own eyes and I have seen um, the construct um, and the way in which um, Malcolm has developed very practical production models of his theories which has turned the mathematics into um, real things. I've seen the evidence for example uh, in Thailand of the first ever thunderstorm breakthrough where we, what, what we called at the time or what he called a thunderstorm in a jar and you can see that up here already I put, put, a, put a photo of it. From Thailand I've also seen the application of the technology into various different form factors um, cars, jet engines, and so on, um, and big generators, caterpillars, and uh, most importantly, I have seen the application to uh, small generators, what we might call chondas. These are Chinese manufacturing of a Japanese design for the small generators that the World Bank says, um, you know, pollute um, the world through um, their off-grid use, that is to say the rural communities who cannot um, get onto the grid in, in Africa and of course run these generators in order to live, to provide light and so on. And although solar is still a big deal or is becoming a big deal and helps during the day, at night these generators are essential for the kids to be able to do their homework and so on. And that's the market that I want to address today and show you why um, the use of this technology, the Molten Sea Arc Atomic Reconstruction Technology, or MSART, is such a useful technology. Um, not because of the mathematics behind it, but because I've seen it of my own eyes here.
in my back garden. And what this video will show is the um, chonda, a chonda which we purchased, being uh, d being re retrofitted in that shed. We keep it uh, retrofitted uh, with the with the uh, molten sea arc atomic reconstruction technology, and then used and tested with a gas analyzer. And to me, this is world changing. You know, because I've been to Nigeria. Uh, you know, I've been to India. I've been to the third world countries where this technology is so important. And I think it's where we need to um, really make an effort to uh, try to help. The need for clean energy for these generators is extraordinary. A World Bank report published just a couple of years ago said that the annual spend on diesel and petrol generators was between 30 and 50 billion dollars a year. That's a heck of a lot of emissions. If this technology can clean up only a proportion of those, then it's going to be transformative for the planet. In particular countries, the situation is acute. The World Bank report estimates that Nigeria spends three times as much on these backup generators, or what it calls backup for some in the rural communities. It's obviously a key source of soul energy. Um, three times as much as, the, as they do on the national grid. In places like the Congo, it's nine times as much. So this technology is there and can be used and we must see if we can get it out into the world. So that's all well and good. I've taken you on a bit of a walk which ended in my garden and I'm quite excited about the technology which I've seen with the evidence of my own eyes. Uh, but the key question is, what is the technology? What does it do? And what problem does it solve specifically with respect to the internal combustion engine? And the answer, according to Malcolm, is it's a waste energy recovery system. So for the rest of this video, you're not only going to see the engine or the retrofitted Chonda in action, which comes in just a few minutes, but I'm going to splice it with information from Malcolm's impromptu uh, lecture that he gave in my kitchen about the various components and the key things that make it work. As an added bonus, there's also another of the world's greatest thinkers um, I've, which, who I've spliced in in this next section, which helps ma amplify Malcolm's description of the problem that the thunderstorm generator solves. You've got three jet engines that we're testing because it's the principle. And all you need to come away from this is one thing. It's a waste energy recovery system. There's no smoke and mirrors. You know, all you have to understand is that when you put petrol in your car and you put three pounds of petrol in, one pound goes to drive the car and the other two pounds an investment in polluting the world so we all die. So uh, like when, if you have a gasoline car, you're, uh, you're, you're converting less than a third, uh, often maybe only 25%, of the energy in the gasoline is converted into motion. The rest is turned into waste heat. So there you have it, two great minds who've defined what the key problem is with internal combustion engines and who are trying to come up with solutions. Well, I can certainly tell you which solution I think is a better one, and that's Malcolm's. And the reason is, for two, well, there are two key reasons. The first is because he has plasmoids on his side. And secondly, his solution means retrofitting the hundreds of millions of internal combustion engines out there with just three components, which we'll come on to in a minute. So what is a plasmoid? Well, you'll remember that I um, talked about the plasmoid unification model on the Strike Foundation homepage at the very bottom uh, earlier in uh, the video. Um, and uh, I'll put it up here, but the, the plasmoids are donut or toroidal shapes, clusters of net protons or net electrons that once captured and placed into a toroidal orbit are capable of absorbing, storing, and releasing enormous amounts of energy present when they're self-generated and structured electromagnetic containment field, okay, within their, their, their containment field. Plasmoids, in effect, function as an atomic battery that can be self-charging due to the ability to convert matter to available clean energy. And that's it in a nutshell. So you've both got Elon and Malcolm working in the battery industry, if you like, except one doesn't require 
huge real estate to build gigafactories. And the second thing I said was the three components that you need to have to retrofit any engines really from this into this. The first is of these components, number one, is an ultraviolet light, which are ubiquitous. They're commercially available. Go on Amazon, have a look. So that's not such a big deal. Okay. The other two are shown here by my colleague, Mark, uh, and you'll see in the right, his right hand um, is uh, what we call the bubbler, which effectively um, clean, creates the plasmoids to be sent into um, the thunderstorm generator. And we'll see how the bubbler works in a moment with Malcolm's explanation. The third one is what I call the sphere, the thunderstorm generator, the, the catalytic converter. It's, got, it's had many names since its, since its invention um, in Thailand um, and in the lab in, and shows a little red thunderstorm in a jar that I showed you earlier. Um, but effectively, um, I call it the sphere. It's easily identifiable as a sphere at the top of a, of a, of a, of a sort of a long pipe. And you can see in this diagram that the exhaust, um, uh, the, the, which emanates the waste energy, which emanates from the exhaust of any engine, is fed into the top, into the sphere. And then um, it goes down the tube and effectively um, it comes out, as you can see, the gas out there. And the bubbler um, introduces the plasmoids, as you can see in the bottom. OK, so for, for, from the water in the steel wool comes into the bottom. And it, it, all the action, the thunderstorm generator and the thunderstorm is, con is created in the sphere. Now, this is all very simple. Uh, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot more complex and those of you in, into physics can see it on the strike foundation. But the thunderstorm um, um, tornado or the, the tornado or thunderstorm in a jar effectively replicates thunderstorm conditions in the sphere. The exhaust gases, which are introduced at an angle, first expand anti-clockwise and then contract clockwise as they pass through the cavity between the two spheres. As you can see, there's two spheres or at least two spheres in the, the sphere that uh, I showed you earlier. And Malcolm will explain. This creates opposing tornadoes within both the outer and inner spheres. These expanding and then contracting tornadoes strip electrons and lay a positive charge on the outside surface of the inner sphere. The atomized water on the inside of the sphere lays a negative charge, so it's the positive and negative, uh, and this creates a potential difference across the stainless steel charging plasmoids. That, in a nutshell, is a good introduction to this next bit from Malcolm's kitchen cabinet explanation. And the air comes up here when it's heated and you see the red arrows. It simply spins around uh, inside the sphere. This is a sphere within a sphere within a sphere. In very simple terms, even though it's, you know, it's simplicity plus, it's very difficult to, like, this is to do with the reverse engineering of the, the sun. But for our purposes, it's simply that the hot air comes up, it spins around here. There's a four inch sphere, three inch sphere, and a two inch sphere. So the two inch sphere simply directs the flow that's coming through from this direction of the blue arrow. That's coming from this bubbler here. So basically, uh, and if you view here, it's simply that the but anyway, the, simply that the uh, uh, that we draw the air in through this bubbler, which means that the air uh, comes in the bottom and has to pass through the water that's in this. And this, the uh, you can see here, this stainless steel wall, and this is a polycarbonate outside. So if you look at normal electronics, view the stainless steel as a capacitor, and view the polycarbonate as a as a, uh, as a insulator. Well, if you're still with me and you believe half as much as I do that this is one of the greatest inventions of mankind, the plasmoid technology, then 20 minutes really isn't that much to see what some, something which is absolutely going to change the world, is it really? But we now move, uh, certainly if you believe what I just said, to the garden of the absurd. And the rest of this video is primarily um, 
me showing you what happened in December 21 when we ran um, the uh, Chonda, the retrofitted Chonda for investors and people who were interested in the technology. And I call it the Garden of the Absurd because at that time the COP26 was going on at Glasgow and all these guys were up there talking about how we needed to completely change our lifestyles and fall on our swords in order to uh, stop the climate from choking us to death. And I had the technology in my back garden. I was using the technology in my back garden. You know, even if you just take what I said earlier about using this on the Chondas, on the asset, on the small generators across the globe, just imagine what the effect that would be. So um, there it is. Now I'm going to reintroduce you to some of the components in situ. And the rest is what I saw on the day. Today we're going to look at the MSAT system, which is retrofitted to a Chonda generator. And a Chonda um, is effectively a Chinese sort of make of um, the ubiquitous Honda. So the, at the moment what we're doing is just setting up in the garden of the absurd. And I say that because this revolutionary technology, when you have you know, 25,000 people meeting up at COP um, um, can actually do everything pretty much uh, that the COP wants from marine to air um, and indeed, as you see here, to change lives of the people in the third world. Um, we've got a Bosch analyzer here, which is just setting itself up and that um, measures the percentage of volume of CO, CO, which is carbon monoxide, and then parts per million of hydrocarbons. So those are the nasty gases. So we've only got a two, um, a two instrument analyzer on this occasion, but uh, I should introduce Mark, who's now going to be like Lila on the on the game show, and is going to reveal the engine for us. Great stuff. So as you can see, um, we've just all we've done is we've put it into a, a frame. So it's just mounted on top of the frame. This thing for uh, purposes of um, demonstration. And we've cut away bits of the frame in order to allow people to see exactly what we've got. Now the three key components of the MSAT technology, the molten sea arc toroid technology or system is we've got an ultra uh, violet um, lamp which ionizes the air that goes into uh, our bubbler system okay which generates helps generate the pl plasmoids and in here we have water and uh, you'll I'll show you once it's working the actual bubbling of it and inside there are steel wool. stainless steel wool thank you I forgot that now we've got two on this system um, we're only going to be using the one on the left here. Um, the previous one has been used to accept leachate. Uh, I, for those of you who don't know what uh, leachate is, that's tip gas and that's poured into there. So the system can run on any type of fuel. So alcohol, leachate, or methane gas. Um. Because it's like, it's a waste energy recovery system. It could care less what's supplying the heat gas itself in fact this is the first time that the system has been demonstrated uh, in the uk or it's going to be about the seventh time we've done it um, which is using just a regular petrol engine um, and all we've done is we've retro you can see we've we've done nothing other than retrofit at various points the uh the, the three components so you've seen the one which is the ionizer the bubbler down here which will show bubbling water with its steel wool inside we're using the left one only and then the really um, fantastic thing that we've got uh, to show you today is the uh, catalytic resonator um, uh, which goes goes right into the exhaust there so if you can see it just underneath there it goes just it, it's actually accepting the exhaust from the generator and then it's um, once it's done its thing it um, comes out through the bottom here as um, as gases and so on. Too simple. And we've proven this principle at all scales. We've got a 24 inch spheres. We've done it on a V8 Caterpillar motor. We did it on a jet turbine and running a jet turbine through a, a 24 inch sphere, which is, you know, here um, in Australia, we zeroed out the pollution and, you know, doubled the, the uh, power of not only that, 
there was no carbon left. We had a, uh, three turbines, one of them had been used and it was all carboned up. When we ran our technology through it, the carbon disappeared. Now, you can see the yellow rope. The yellow rope is a bit of a bodge job. And the reason we have the yellow rope is, as you can see, here's the um, stylus or the, uh, the probe which goes into the machine, which hopefully is zeroed out. Okay, it's not quite zeroed out, but um, we'll calibrate that. But that, we found that the vibrations are when the system was on, uh, the bloody stylus kept falling out. So we've, uh, we've actually sort of found a way to make sure that it stays, stays in for the purpose of the demonstration. So finally, we come to uh, the show and tell test, which was done in my garden in December 2021 um, of several. There was one of several, but I filmed this particular one. And what you can see on your screen is all of the components that I referenced in the last segment, um, the ultraviolet lamp, the bubbler, um, the sphere or the, um, the uh, thunderstorm generator, um, all of these things are now shown in the diagram and gives you an idea of how they're put together um, just to reaffirm the sort of basic mechanics, if you like, of what we're doing here. Other than that, the most important um, box to sit, look at, of course, is the Bosch analyzer. And uh, despite me mentioning the yellow rope and a bodge job, it worked. The fact is that the stylus was kept throughout the whole time in the exhaust um, the, the emissions exhaust and um, actually got readings. Now, one of the things that we found is that uh, I said there were seven times that I've, I've used this machine in my garden, at least seven. And of course, this, the, some of the components, the sphere in particular, has been used before. It was used actually before COVID. Um, and we have found that the sphere becomes impregnated with plasmoids impregnated with plasmoids. So that means even if you turn off all of the three components, the thunderstorm generator components that I spoke about, you still get lower emissions. Now this could be quite useful, for example, um, for the guys who are building a car. You can see it here, it's a bit ugly, and of course it's gonna be re-engineered. A lot of the stuff that you see sticking out the bonnet will go underneath, not least because they don't need a catalytic converter underneath. They can put the sphere underneath, for example. And um, what that means is that even if the thunderstorm generator components don't work, or the MSART technology components don't work, you're still going to be able to drive uh, until you can get it fixed and with lower emissions, which is pretty something, which is something which we really just found out when we were doing the shows, show and tells in the Garden of the Absurd. So that's another great thing of coming to my garden and finding out new things about this technology. So without further ado, here we go. Great, so we've the um, Bosch analyzer has now been calibrated and as you can see, um, we're showing up at zero. So the first test, as I say, is we're gonna do um, 90 seconds to a minute of running with just um, the generator itself without turning on the MSET technology. And I will film those numbers and then uh, we'll apply the MSET technology and we'll do that for a couple of minutes or however long uh, just to make sure that we see the Bosch settle down and then we'll revert back to just the generator uh, it, emissions from the generator maestro
So we're now back to just the generator without the NSAT technology. now off just a reminder what we're seeing here are the numbers for a sphere impregnated with plasmoids with the MSAT technology turned off therefore they're low emission numbers but not zero okay well that's it, you can see that uh, the emissions drop significantly uh, when we run the, M run the MSAT technology. One of the key things we found is that when the sphere um, or the catalytic resonator um, tornado as we call it, uh, the sphere, is, um, uh, has been used quite a bit, what happens is that it, it retains the plasmoids um, becomes almost impregnated with them and so even after it comes off after you turn off the technology it actually um, and you just run the engine through it as an as an exhaust then it still makes certainly the hydrocarbons piece down here uh, much cleaner and so um, obviously we've got a base um, engine uh, numbers which we can um, you know reflect on um, in terms of what you've seen today. So, thank you and goodbye from the Garden of the Third. Well, that was a demonstration of the Molten Sea Arc Atomic Reconstruction Technology on a Chonda generator. And the key points are, number one, even with the technology off with the impregnated sphere, which is obviously has to be used quite a few times to become impregnated, the emissions are low. But with the technology turned on, the emissions are zero. There's no catalytic converter technology in the world right now, as far as I know, that can give you zero emissions. So if you're interested in finding out more about all the theories and so on behind it, as I have mentioned earlier, it's Strike Foundation. Dot earth where Malcolm has posted all his uh, research online. If you're interested in helping me to take the technology into Africa and to the poorer countries of the world, I'm Gary Ling and I'm on gary at tradershore.com 
And if you're interested in investing in the technology overall globally, then the people to speak to, or the person to speak to really, is Christopher Foster at Alpha Prospects. All the details are below, and uh, I hope that there's something of use for you here uh, to be able to contact any one of us. Other than that, thanks for being here and hope to see you again. It's the principle. And all you need to come away from this is one thing. It's a waste energy recovery system. Ballsy thinking, the gender agnostic antidote to sloppy thinking.